Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to give you a preview of my brand new A Quilting Life planner and workbook. I am so excited to finally have my advanced copy of this in my hands. This is really a dream come true. I, I'm going to be kind of walking you through the pages today, and we've actually got some photographs from the publisher, so we can put those up on the screen so you can get a really detailed look. I'm going to share with you the differences between this and the Quilting Life planner that I came out with last year. So I'm going to talk about why they're different, how they're different, why you would want one over the other or even both. Uh, and I'm just super excited to really start showing this to you and we'll get started now. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you was just a little bit about the size. Uh, if you have last year's planner, you can see that it is quite a bit bigger. I actually designed my first planner to be really portable so that you could take it along to quilting classes, to quilt shops, anywhere you needed to go and be able to keep notes and record things. I wanted it to be super portable. Uh, after you know working with this, I realized that there was a need for both sizes. So I, I wanted to prepare a planner and workbook that you keep in your sewing room. Um, of course, you can also take this one with you too. A lot of people these days have large totes and bags and, and this will go on the go with you as well. But there are a lot of different things in here in the new planner where you're kind of meant to reflect and, and do some figuring. And so you'd probably do that at home. Everything that's contained in the smaller planner is also in the larger planner, but the larger planner has so much more, and I, I can't wait to get into it and show you all of that. Uh, they both have the spiral bindings, which I loved with this planner, and which I'm going to love even more with this larger size. Uh, also, just in reference, here's uh, um, my upcoming Home and Hearth quilt book. So it's very close in size to just your regular quilt books that you did. All the Martingale quilt books are this size. So just wanted to give you size compared to a quilt book. Uh, I'll be putting a spiral binding on this one soon too. I love having spiral bindings on my book, but we wanted this to come with the spiral binding. Now we're gonna go into the table of contents and I'm going to, for, the pages that I'm going to be talking about with you today, uh, we have some pictures from the publisher that we can put up on the screen. So we're going to start with the table of contents. So you'll notice that the table of contents takes up two different pages. There are 12 sections that start with the words monthly planner, and the, each of those sections have a different theme. Uh, and so as you get into the planner, you'll see that the first page in the section is always going to be uh, the monthly planner page, or page. It is undated, so we'll pop up a picture of this so you can fill in the month. I, I wanted to do that so that you could start this planner whenever you got it. If you got it in January, great, go ahead and start in January. But if, if you don't get it till February or March or April or July, I wanted to make it undated um, so that you would start at the beginning and work through the different sections. Just for a uh, reference, also I'm going to put this up. The small planner, because of size, we were limited to three calendar blocks on each page. And so to make it fit the 31 days in the longer months, we did additional rows. This was actually the only comment that I received about the original planner was uh, some people really preferred the traditional seven day layout. And so we have that in the large planner. We just were really limited on size. If, if you like small planners, what I told a lot of people to do who emailed was just to use the block at the end of the row for Saturday and Sunday, or just do it numerically and go into that final row and not use it as a traditional layout. But for the new planner, we really did want to uh, give you that traditional seven squares across layout. 
Um, so let's go back to the table of contents really quick. Uh, so th the first month's theme is reflection, and I have a lot of different exercises there for you to just kind of look back at your things in the past that you've done and things that you might want to do of in the future. We actually have a, a photo to put up of this page so that you can look at it in greater detail. Um, it's kind of meant for you to do just a little bit of journaling here as you reflect and prepare. Um, there are more reflection pages than the one that we're going to pop up on the screen. So um, the first one that you're seeing is the reflection exercises, but then there's also a page where you do some reflecting on your current organizational systems right at the be beginning when you get started. The next section of the planner is Love It, List It, and it, that's where your lists will go. Uh, your current work's in progress, your long-term work's in progress, bucket list projects. Uh, we have a screenshot of the current work in progress that we will put up. Okay, the third section is quilting and sewing systems and just systems, and you'll find out more about this when I do the videos beginning in January, but I really believe that you need to have systems in place to help you get things done, things that just automatically you know what you're gonna do. And so in the third section of the planner and in the third month, I'm gonna walk you through creating some of those systems. Um, some of you probably already have great systems in place and so you'll want to, you know, just continue doing those things that work for you. But we'll have more tips and uh, ideas for sewing room cleaning and organization. In the fourth section of the planner, we're going to talk about planning basics and just kind of the things that I've learned over the years from all of the probably hundreds of planners and planning systems that I've researched and looked at. Uh, section five is all about fabric and scrap management. So we're gonna talk about systems for stash management, uh, how to keep track of your large cuts of fabrics, your pre-cuts, your scraps. We'll just really delve into that in month five. Month six is all about keeping inventory. What patterns do you have? What rulers do you have? What specialty tools and notions do you already have uh, so that you don't buy them again? There's also a shopping list and a wish list in that section. Section seven is, begins with the popular 20 set steps to an organized sewing space. It's 20 steps you can take to get your space back in order. And there are lots of ideas in that month for organization, for simplifying your storage. Uh, next one is, is more on seasonal quilts and decor and home decor projects. So that whole section of the planner is where you can keep track of the seasonal quilts and decor items that you already have, the things that you want to make, and ideas that you have for the future. The next section, review regularly, is all about reviewing. I have learned that if I don't review what I've done, it, I just seem to be spinning my wheels. Review is just, an, for me, an essential part of the organizing process. And so I've taken some things that I've learned from some different time management and uh, business productivity models and just really applied it to the sewing and quilting things that, that I'm working on. So I'm really super excited about that chapter. The section 10 is giving and gifting where you can make lists of projects that you wanna sew for charity, things that you wanna make for other people. Section 11 is about your journey and your legacy. Uh, more journaling and, and fun ideas there that you can put. Everybody started somewhere. Some of us have ancestors or family members who quilted and got us started. Others started because of friends. Many of us just started because of YouTube or quilting blogs, whatever it is, this is a great section to kind of reflect on how you got here and, and where you want to go and how you want to uh, continue your legacy of quilting. Finally, the last section is really all about home organization systems. And I have systems for your calendar, ideas for handling mail and paper, menu planning, cleaning systems, 
everything. I just really felt like I wanted to put that in the planner because if my home is running smoothly, I have more time to quilt and sew. Then at the back of the book from page 80 to 105 are project planner pages. And we also have image to put up for that. And these are more detailed project planner pages. I love these and I, uh, we also had these, have these in the smaller planner, but these are just larger sized and I can't wait to start filling this out with, with my long-term projects and things that I wanna do. The, at the end of the book then are some helpful resources. There is a list of some of my favorite tools and notions. Uh, there's a place for you to record the tips that you've learned from wherever you've learned them that you want to remember. Uh, I have some, a reading list uh, that I consider super helpful and some of those are quilting books and some of them are organizing and time, time management. Some of them are just kind of nonfiction, inspirational books that I've enjoyed over the years. Also at the very end, there's a place for you to just kind of make a list of things that you want to get. Uh, just kind of finally in wrapping this up, the photography throughout the planner is absolutely gorgeous. Martin Gale was able to take pictures of quilts that I've done, not only for my own books, but for compilation books where I maybe submitted one quilt or project along with several other authors. And so it's really fun to have the photography of all those projects kind of in this one place. I hope you enjoyed looking at the pages of the Quilting Life Planner and Workbook up close, getting to see the details, find out about the different ways that you'll be able to use this. I'm super excited to also let you know that we're gonna have video content beginning in January to go along this with this. Every month I will have a Quilting Life Planner and Workbook video that you can tune into to see kind of what I'm doing that month, how I'm using the prompts and the different activities for that month and just more tips and tricks along the way to help you get organized. We also have links for this. They are available for pre-order now at Amazon, in my Etsy shop, at Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, if you're a shop owner, uh, reach out to Martingale for wholesale orders. Uh, we'll have those links in the description below and they are scheduled to start arriving in October, so very, very soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.